So let's say you have a trailer. That means you're probably going to have some friends or neighbors or people who want to borrow it. And let's say some of those people don't really know what they're doing with trailers. And they let the connector for the wiring just drag on the ground rather than plugging it into an adapter on their car. Yeah, that's what happened here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix trailer wiring, specifically how to fix the pigtail that connects the trailer to your vehicle. Now this happens to be a flat connector, but the general concepts are the same no matter what style your trailer has. I'm going to start by peeling back the existing uh, heat shrink that was around the old adapter here. And I'm going to pull that back far enough so that I can see what color wires it has inside. It looks like I've got a green, a brown, a yellow, and a white. Now I've never done one of these before, so I'm going to go ahead and peel back near the connector itself because as they feed into the plastic, I'm hoping I can tell which wire goes to which lead. So you can't really see it, but the different connectors are labeled on this old adapter. So I'm using that to map which wire color goes to which connector. This is going to matter because I want to make sure I don't cross up the wires when I'm soldering on the new connector. However, when I pulled out the new connector, I realized it used the same wire coloring. Although they're slightly different styles of color, it's still a green, a yellow, a brown, and a white. Or black with a white stripe, as it were. The next step is to just cut off the old one. So I picked up this replacement pigtail for about five bucks at the local big box store. And rather conveniently, its wires are colored in the same way as the wires for the trailer. Now I don't know if this is the way that all trailers are wired, but uh, it seems to work out real nice for this particular job, that I can just match the colors. So I'm going to be using this heat shrink tubing. That's uh, plastic or rubber insulating tubing that shrinks when you heat it. So the first thing I want to do after I cut off the old pigtail is to slide on a large piece of this heat shrink. This is going to be the outermost piece of the insulation that will go over the entire set of wires once I'm done connecting everything. Once that's done, the next thing I need to do is strip back a little bit of the insulation on the wires for the trailer, and then also strip back a little bit of insulation on the wires for the new adapter. Now if you don't have wire strippers like these, you can use a variety of other things. A razor blade would work. Uh, if you have a pair of needle nose pliers, those will usually have a little area in them that you can use for this. Just be careful you don't cut through the copper, and for heaven's sakes, don't use your teeth. Now that I've stripped both the wires on the adapter and the wires from the trailer, I'm going to cut four short lengths of smaller heat shrink tube, and I'm going to put that over the wiring for the adapter. You want to slide it down far enough that the heat from the soldering is not going to cause these to start to shrink. So make sure you separate your wires enough that there's plenty of room for that. Once I'm sure I've got heat shrink over each individual wire as well as over the entire bundle of wires, the next step is to twist the copper of each color together. So green to green and yellow to yellow, brown to brown and white to white. If I haven't mentioned it already, you'll want to double check your wiring colors with the leads that are on the adapter and where they go on your trailer. I just got lucky that these are exactly the same color. There's also a little bit of a holy war out there about how to twist wires together in this manner. I'm doing it the way that you see here. You might choose to do it some other way. However you want to do it, just make sure it's a good solid connection and that it's going to take up the solder really well. If you've never soldered before, this is an excellent first project. These wires are fairly stiff, so they'll hold themselves up right where you need them. And there's not a lot of extra tricky parts to this. You will need a soldering iron, which you can pick up for just a few dollars. And you'll need some solder, of course. Just plug in the soldering iron, wait for it to heat up. And then touch the soldering iron to the wires. And bring in your solder and let it melt. And let the heat of the soldering iron carry it into all the strands and the threads of the individual wires. It's kind of a magical process. It more or less does itself. All you really need to do is get the soldering iron in the right spot and touch it with the solder and uh, the process pretty much does itself. If you have a couple of little strands sticking out, just crimp them down with a pair of pliers or your wire strippers. 
And that's it, the soldering is done, so now I can slide the heat shrink insulation over each of the individual connections. If you forgot to put the heat shrink on before you soldered, now you get to cut off everything you've just soldered, put the heat shrink on and solder it all again. Once the heat shrink insulation is in place, just apply some heat to it. You can do this with a heat gun, which is probably the best way, or you can use a lighter, or even a blowtorch, any way to apply some heat. Just be careful you don't apply too much heat to it, because this will burn. I find it's easiest just to kind of keep an eye on the process and don't let it go quite to the point that it's going to start to melt. You'll see as you apply heat that the heat shrink does shrink down and you'll know it's snug down enough when you can see the connections you've just soldered getting a little hug from your heat shrink. After each individual strand has been carefully insulated, the next thing is to slide down the larger piece of heat shrink that's going to protect the entire bundle of wiring. Now since this is such a large piece of heat shrink and I was a little pressed for time, I decided to use a blowtorch to apply the heat rather than the lighter. And the blowtorch made quick work of this, and as soon as everything cooled off, it was ready to go test. I think probably the easiest way to test is to plug the trailer into a car with the right adapter, start up the ignition, and then check first the brakes, and then the left turn signal, and then the right turn signal. If you've got other running lights and other things on your trailer, of course you'll want to check those as well. But in my case, this trailer's all fixed up and ready for the next person to borrow it and abuse it. I hope you found some of this useful and that you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a thumbs up and maybe subscribe. If you found something that I did really wrong, it's entirely possible, in fact, probable, leave that down in the comments too. And thanks for watching.